I graduated from an arts academy in the summer of 2006. I have to confess, what I do doesn't usually sell. Funding has also been postponed. Shit got real fast. So the first thing I aimed after exiting the academy was a stable source of income. And I wasn't the only one. People all over Australia, Belgium, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Ireland, Singapore and Spain also jumped in. How do I earn my living, you wonder? Well, for that, you just have to go to the front. I am one of the chosen few who still are employed, yet soon to be reclassified as self-employed out of around 20,000 food delivery couriers working for this one particular company which charges you 2.5 euros to deliver anything and everything edible from restaurants all over the city. But if you look at the stats, there are many more of us divided in around four delivery services all across the city, all enjoying our freedom of movement and freedom from stability. They asked me to write for them and deliver great food to homes and offices everywhere, flexible work, competitive fees. And as a writer, I got freedom to work my own schedule, small working areas, keeping things fast by delivering to local restaurants, uh, sorry, neighborhoods, a great app for iOS and Android to manage the orders for me, no need to handle the cash apart from the tips, high quality gear and equipment, and great money. Sure, but an artist actually never cares about money. All I needed was a social security number, a bike or a scooter, an iPhone, or, well, an Android phone, and an internet subscription. As a freelancer, add to that a KVK number, an invoice workflow, an accountant, paid taxes every quarter, 160 euros to cover for the equipment and for the delivery bag. I also needed a lot of determination, as I was about to find out. I signed up in January, and it's now October. On most days, I wake up at 10. I don't start my shifts until around 5, and I experience the occasional sore, backache, headache, need to sabotage the process. It goes on around until 10.45 or 9. I take a day off per week, sometimes two when I travel. All my shifts are pre-approved. I don't get to work when I want, but I can express, express a preference. My hourly rate is of 9.06 euros plus one euro bonus plus tips. But people rarely tip in the Netherlands, by the way. My monthly limit is of 160 hours. You can do the math. I have a limit of 23 months of working for this company, after which my contract lists me as a potential freelancer or unemployed. My skills are non-transferable. My training consisted of a two-hour session of one trip to an initial customer. After that, I was on my own. During the activity itself, my thought process is never suspended or fully focused on the task. Navigating the city is automatic, a process propelled by an algorithm. Me and my colleagues, we almost never meet. My boss is tied to my wrists and accessible through a 4G network connection. He makes up in efficiency for what he lacks in subtlety. I sometimes forget if I just picked up an order from a restaurant and I need to go to a client, or if I got a new order and I need to pick it up, or if I'm just biking through the city and need to get home. But then I remember I'm carrying the bag. I end up ringing around 12 different doorbells throughout the city on a day-to-day -day basis. I accumulate 40 to 60 to 80 kilometers of biking per day, depending on the day from Bossen Lommer to Rivierenburg to Dam Square, out west and Westerhafmeer, from rich to poor to drunk, all hungry. And then there's the waiting, the downtime, the in-between moments which allow you to understand that you are part of a larger network and that you depend on it in order to begin your workday. There are times when I wait for 40 minutes for an order to come through. There are no guarantees, but I am plugged in, me and others like me. We depend on each other in order for this to work. One extended fabric of selves and their needs tapped into the same network designed to solve them. A side job is not an abstraction. It feeds a constant reflection on the conditions of life in a polyphonic neoliberal society. I'm not an artist that just happens to deliver food. They're sides of the same coin. I'm an artist 
and a food delivery courier, at times an account manager for a software firm that outsources its workforce. I'm a stage designer, a project manager, a web developer, a copywriter, and so on. Also, did I tell you that I also started working for a cleaning platform two weeks ago? I'm part of what is called the precariat. I'm flexible, I bend enough not to snap, I'm on call, in demand, and I deliver without letting you know the real costs. But an artist never cares about money. Thank you.